All right, I think I'm on the air, and I feel kind of bad because I actually took a long time off around uh, Labor Day. So I am glad to be back and doing another video. And today I'm covering something that's really, really interesting um, about production. Uh, whether you're whether you're producing music, you know, that people listen to, uh, like through iTunes or from streaming service, or whether you are um, producing music, as I often do for film, TV, uh, scoring, and that sort of stuff. Um, there's this very interesting and very important kind of craft that sits behind music composition, and that is understanding loudness. And it's a deep topic, and I will right off the bat say there's much more to it than I'm going to cover in this video, but I can cover some really, really valuable insights, and that's what I'm going to be doing probably in the next, I don't know, 10 minutes, all right? So please hang in there. Uh, there is some sort of <laughs> vague math and uh, things like that, but I think I've broken it down. It's very simple. Now, there are three things that I use when I am trying to uh, get one of my tracks to a broadcast level, right? So that's a larger theme we're talking about here is broadcast quality audio. Now, the first uh, two factors really help us identify the third factor. So the first factor is true peak. Um, true peak is not just a peak audio signal like you would see in your meter uh, in your DAW or something. True peak takes into consideration what's going to happen when that sound actually comes out into the world into a speaker. Um, and the thing is that you can actually see uh, a waveform and even a meter in your mixing environment that's not clipping, but you can have intersam what's called intersample clipping. And it's, it's not too important to understand um, exactly how and why that happens. Why, why can't I see it in my computer, but it happens. But know that it's there and know that essentially you can't be sure um, just from standard uh, metering that there won't be any clipping, which is a concern if you're going to try and be as loud as possible because you're going to be running your loudness right up against the edge and a little, a little mistake uh, will cause clipping, right? So we want to try and avoid that generally. Now, when I was starting out with production, I'll just say this for anybody who's a naysayer and watching this video, it seems like, okay, yeah, you have a handful of clips here and there, unless you're like a total audiophile listening through the best speakers, no one ever hears it. And, and I thought that for a long time. And it's not entirely untrue. You know, if I bring my family in here and ask them to listen to tracks that I know are clipping, a lot of times they won't. They're not going to be like, oh, I don't like that track, it's clipping. But professionals will. And we're talking here about broadcast quality audio. And broadcast quality audio cannot clip. You, 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 just, you don't do that. All right, it's, an, it's a sign of uh, a lack of professionalism. So just get that right out of the way. So true peak is a measurement that we can take that is going to help us identify what's going to happen in the worst case scenario, right? Once this comes out into the outside world, and it's going to help us monitor and defend against things like intersample clipping. So true peak is a first number. It's usually measured in decibels, dBTP stands for decibels true peak. The second factor that's really important to monitor is what's called integrated loudness. Now, if you've ever gotten into LUFS, LUFS, or loudness, and you're trying to measure this, you've got maybe a, a plugin that does this, you'll see LUFS, and it'll usually have um, different kinds of LUFS that are being measured, short term, things like that, but one of them will be integrated. And integrated is really the number that you want to look for if you're trying to keep things simple, which I always am. So you've got true peak, dB true peak, and you've got dB LUFS. Both of them are measured in decibels, which is a, a ratio. Um, LUFS are an average, okay? So you'll see when you look up loudness in a meter, like maybe Insight or what I use uh, right behind me, which is uh, Supervision in Cubase, You'll, you'll see that LUFS is an average, right? And you might ask yourself, is this different from RMS, which is root mean square? It's also kind of an average loudness. And it's, it's the same insofar as RMS and LUFS are both averages. The difference is that RMS uh, is averaging loudness uh, 
without regard for how our ears respond differently to lower frequencies than higher frequencies. So our ears are very sensitive the higher the frequency. Our ears are less sensitive the lower the frequency. So if you have a ton of level, right, in your really low frequencies, then RMS will be showing an average that's not really what we perceive. LUFs, on the other hand, take this into account and they weight certain frequencies um, depending on how well we hear them, how, how strongly we perceive them as human beings. And that really gives us a better sense of loudness, right? Because you can have really powerful bass and you could still have a conversation over it. Whereas if you got really loud trouble, you can't even think straight. It's so loud, right? So loudness has a lot to do with the source material. Is it high frequency, mid frequency, or low frequency? And depending on the frequency range being used at any point in time, loudness can change too. So LUFS is a really valuable way to get an average that is perceptive. It's based on how we perceive audio, not just actually the math of what audio is happening or the electricity of what audio is happening. Okay, so we got true peak and we got integrated loudness or LUFS. Now, if you take these two numbers, you basically can compute a third thing, which you, you maybe have learned about. Um, I feel like I've seen a lot more about this in the last couple of years called crest factor. And crest factor is essentially um, a, the difference between your peak, uh, in this case we want to look at true peak, and your uh, loudness average. In this case we want to look at integrated loudness. So the difference between those two numbers. And then that gives us a crest factor. So if our loudness is 10 and our peak is minus 1, or let's say our loudness is, is minus 10, our peak is minus 1, then we have a crest factor of 9, 10 minus 1. So that's our crest factor. That crest factor is a great way to measure dynamics. And that's in the title of this video. It's really, really important. We want to preserve dynamics as much as possible. But of course, in this day and age, we also have to meet loudness goals. And I'm going to demonstrate all of this here just behind me. This is all just preamble uh, chit chat to explain kind of what we're what we're talking about. But you've got true peak. Uh, you've got integrated loud uh, LUFs, and you've got a, a sort of aggregate of these two numbers that we call crest factor. It's not the aggregate, it's, it's the difference between these two numbers that we call crest factor. Crest factor is a way for us to measure how much dynamics has been preserved. True peak is a way of us uh, determining and measuring uh, whether or not we have clipping. And loudness is a way of measuring what people will perceive of our music, okay? So we're, now we're gonna get to the demo part of this. I'm gonna take myself off the screen so that uh, you can see everything that I'm doing here. So the goal here is to maintain transients and dynamics because we want them to be preserved once they're normalized by say Spotify or Apple Music or an editor. We give an editor a cue, they put it in a TV show, the TV show's audio gets mastered to a certain uh, broadcast level. And then um, if we haven't done our work carefully, our dynamics may not be preserved there. So by maintaining a crest factor, maintaining transients and dynamics in our audio while achieving the loudness goals, our LUFS goals, we uh, can be sure that we're, we're uh, producing broadcast quality. So I'm gonna look at two examples here. In one, the crest factor is uh, more dynamic and in the other it's less dynamic but they're both the same loudness and this is a really interesting thing so let's take a look at this here I've got this meter up here uh, this is Cubase supervision but you could also use um, Insight which is a great isotope metering plugin there are lots of other metering plugins that you can use supervision is uh, really elegant I like it it comes in Cubase which is my DAW of choice. So let's check this out, all right? What I'm going to do is I am going to play this little drum beat. Sorry, let me get my mouse. I can't get my mouse unhooked from there. We're going to loop this drum beat and sounds like so, all right? 
And we can see right away, true peak and integrated short term momentary, these three numbers, these are all versions of loudness LUFS measurements. And we can see the LUFS measurements right there, uh, whereas true peak is being measured in dB. And our peak to loudness or PLR, peak to loudness ratio is measured in dB. Peak to loudness is very much similar to crest factor. So when I see this, I see crest factor. But you know what you'll see here is that roughly if you take the integrated 24.8 and you roughly subtract the true peak 5.42, you're gonna roughly get this crest factor or peak to loudness ratio of 19.4. So this number minus that number equals that number more or less. Now, you know, it's not, not always gonna be exact because these numbers I've noticed, they can change by small amounts um, each time I run one of these tests but uh, the general picture is the same. So I've got all three of the numbers that I really care about, integrated loudness, true peak, and my crest factor down here in one meter, which I really like. So right now, uh, we have in the original file, a true peak of minus five and an integrated uh, loudness of minus 24. That leaves us with this enormous crest factor of 19. So th this is way too dynamic. This is a raw file. I've chose drums because drums are always very dynamic. Um, but you know, the, the thing to know here is that this set of numbers are not realistic for certainly not a final master, but even a final pre-master. For pre-master, we'd want to see this peak to loudness or crest factor value more like around 12 to 15. We'd want to see this integrated more around maybe minus 14 and the true peak somewhere else. So we, we definitely don't want this much um, uh, crest factor, 19.4, that's a little much. So what I'm doing here is I've got, um, an instance of ozone here. And what I'm gonna do is I've got two settings. I've got settings A and settings B. Settings A, uh, let me see actually, um, if I, yes, this is setting A is the one I wanna talk about first. And what this is doing is it is approaching a true peak of minus three decibels, has a threshold of minus 6.8, this is on a limiter, and, um, I like ozone because you can basically learn a threshold based on a specific uh, LUFS target. That's what I've done here. And so if I enable this and I play the drums, what we're gonna see now is that these numbers over here start to approach something more like what I want. The crest factor or peak to loudness is coming in at 10.4. Now this is a little uh, hotter than it came in earlier when I was running a test. This came in around 11. Probably if I maybe played it for a lot longer, uh, it would average out to 11. Then I've got the integrated loudness value, which is minus 13.8. I actually targeted 14. And the reason for that is because Spotify, uh, you know, which is a platform that a lot of us are going to try to target our music towards, um, they are, uh, going to normalize any music that's sent their way uh, to minus 14. So that's why I targeted minus 14 here. So I've got my integrated is roughly the loudness I want. It's a little hot because I'm looking for minus 14. This is minus 13.8. My true peak is minus three dB. And those two numbers, 13 minus three, gives me 10.8, right? 13.8 minus three gives me 10.8. So my crest factor is pretty good here. Um, this means, uh, you know, that I've got fair dynamics. I would say you generally want to aim for um, somewhere between uh, 10 and 12 dB for uh, a master. And you want to aim somewhere between maybe 12 and 15 for a pre-master. So this is kind of mastered volume and level for uh, this, little, this little drum loop. All right, but now let's look at the B version. And I'm gonna reset here, and I'm gonna play it again, we'll see what we get. We're gonna get a very similar integrated value here. Our tree peak now is minus one instead of minus three. We're getting a very similar integrated value. All right, we're getting 13.3. Uh, last time we were getting 13 point something else. Um, 
But our peak to loudness now is like two decibels uh, more dynamic. So what happened here is that my true peak, um, by pushing my true peak up, I uh, and 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 targeting the same loudness. So both of these examples A and B, they are approaching the same loudness. They're not one is not percept perceptively louder than the other. Uh, but because of how I set my true peak in one situation to minus one and in the other situation to minus three, it dramatically changes the effect of my peak to loudness, which is my crest factor, or how much of my dynamics is preserved. So when I run the A with the minus three true peak, you can see that my crest factor over here uh, shrinks. When I run it through B, you can see that my crest factor grows. But these are both have the same basic loudness. They're both basically going to strike the listener as being equally loud. And this is a really, really important achievement because I've just got 2 dB more of dynamics in my audio. It absolutely is going to sound better in a, in a broader variety of settings. And so, you know, I might make this, I might put this on Spotify at minus 14, um, but if I were to send it also to uh, someone who was going to put it in a broadcast at a different loudness level, a different broadcast target, because I've preserved more of my dynamics, 2 dB of dynamics is actually quite a lot, because I've preserved that, um, I can count on the fact that if it's normalized over here on Spotify or it's normalized over here by an editor or wherever it goes, and it's facing different loudness targets, that more dynamics are going to be preserved in that recording. It's going to sound better in more situations. And that's obviously closer to what we call broadcast quality. It's going to sound better in more situations. And it gives editors uh, and producers more latitude for um, how they work with my audio because it has more preserved dynamics. It's still the same loudness as, uh, you know, whichever way I go. So, um, let me kind of just show a, uh, I'm going to kind of drag a summary over here for you to take a look at this. Um, let me drag this over here and let me see, sorry about this, because I made this little table here because um, it's helpful to kind of see. Target in integrated. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm going to take myself off again. Um, but target minus true peak gives you the crest factor. So as your true peak actually approaches zero, as your uh, target luffs, which are all here minus 14 because that's Spotify, and I figure it's a good industry standard. As your true peak uh, approaches zero, you are going to have more and more dynamics preserved even as it's the same loudness. So you really want to do that. You really want to preserve as much loudness as you possibly can. Uh, one thing that I will say is really important to consider, especially for Spotify or any streaming service, is that when they take your audio in this fantastic quality audio that you've produced and they stream it, they're going to compress it. They have to do a compression algorithm on it to stream it out over broadband networks and things like that. And when that happens, distortion is introduced. And when that is introduced, if you have mastered your audio to zero, it's going to be noticeable. You're going to get artifacts that are noticeable. So the general rule is um, at least 0.5, at least half a decibel below zero should be your peak target. But a, a safer bet, especially if you're going through a broad set of targets like maybe SoundCloud, where the bit rate's a little lower, um, but you know Netflix or um, Apple Music, you want to go through all these different streaming platforms. You want to make sure your audio is broadcast quality in all those situations. It's generally an accepted norm to target minus one dB. 
So I wouldn't really go above that, even though it might preserve a little more dynamics. I wouldn't do it because once it goes into a streaming algorithm, you're going to get these other artifacts that get introduced if you don't have just a little bit of extra headroom up there, that top decibel. Okay, so that's why my little table over here <laughs> ends with minus one, because I really wouldn't uh, go above that. It might go to 0.5 if I was doing for a specific target I knew it was only going to be used on one platform and I knew everything about their algorithm I might go to 0.5 for Spotify for example but I generally am making music that's going to go out into uh, either a variety or into platforms hitherto unknown to me that I I don't know anything about so I want to target uh, I want to target minus one as my max but I want to get that crest factor uh, representing my dynamics to preserve as much of my dynamics as possible. So in this example I showed you earlier, you could see that both tracks had the same perceived loudness. I'll play them for you one more time. And they both have the same metered loudness, but one has 2 dB more dynamics available in it than the other. I preserve more dynamics. And that has to do with where I set my true peak. So in many ways you can think of your true peak measurement um, as being an important part of your headroom equation, okay? Let me play those examples for you one more time so you can hear uh, what they sound like. Let me zoom out here. All right, so we got A. And I'm listening on my own headphones. Now I'm going to switch to B. And I would say that most people couldn't detect any loudness difference between these two. But B, it definitely has way more dynamics. And you can see in the blue uh, trace here that this one's way more aggressive. This one is less aggressive, but I'm achieving the same loudness. Achieving the same loudness is, is like uh, just a better level of professionalism, okay? So um, those are, that's the lesson, but I, I did want to cover um, a couple of points of interest. Um, LUFs, I want to reiterate, depend greatly on the frequency uh, response and range of, of your material. So in this case with drums, there's a lot of high end in the cymbals, overheads, a snare crack, that thing, sort of thing. Uh, but if you are uh, doing, a, say, some kind of droney, spacey, sci-fi soundtrack, and it's just kind of in the background, there's no real transients to speak of. You don't need, there's no dynamics to really preserve. Um, in that situation, this system kind of breaks down because you're not, you're not trying to preserve dynamics. You, you can just shoot for loudness because you need to get it up to broadcast level. So the, the source material depends a lot both on how LUFs are measured and also uh, what you can expect. How much dynamics can you preserve? In some situations, there's no dynamics to speak of. I chose a drums, drum loop here because it's, it's super dynamic. Um, I also wanted to point out that um, when I'm recording, I don't record to LUFs or a true peak or crest factor. The recording process of getting stuff on tape then I'm using DBFS or full scale or just standard metering. And I'm looking to usually get somewhere between, um, you know, maybe minus 12 and uh, minus, uh, gosh, I might go down to minus 18. I'm looking for levels somewhere in there to record. But the recording process is different. You want to make sure you've got loads of headroom when you're, when you're doing that. But once I switch to the mixing phase, and absolutely in the mastering phase, I'm looking at true peak, I'm looking at loudness, integrated loudness, and I am looking at uh, crest factor. All right, that was one thing. Um, let me see if there were any other things that I wanted to point out. A sensible target for a crest factor is about uh, 10 to 12 for, uh, for a master, about 12 to 15 for a pre-master. The reason you'd pre-master would have that extra 3 dB in it is because you want to give the mastering engineer as much to work with as possible. So those are good ranges to kind of generally shoot for. Um, also, you can, to a certain degree, 
judge how you're preserving transients by just looking at your waveform. Now, if you if you have a lot of plugins, obviously it doesn't change the, the view of your waveform, but you can always bounce it out and look at it. Preserving uh, transients in the visual waveform is probably a good sign that you're preserving dynamics. So that's another way that you can look at it. Um, let me see if there's anything else here that I really wanted to point out. I don't think that, that there's much more, um, but basically the lesson is you can achieve the same loudness either compromising your dynamics or not compromising your dynamics. And I've shown you how, I've shown you that this, I've proved that this can happen, and you want to preserve as much dynamics as you can while maintaining that target loudness. If you have any questions, please post in the comments. Thank you so much for uh, watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. I'll dive into topics related to broadcast quality again next time for sure. And I'll see you next time. All right, bye.